one more book for you on the ocean for today. Hi, it's me, Mr. Sid. Welcome back. This one is all about this guy here. Do you see him? Let me bring him closer. This is a hermit crab. And hermit crabs have very squishy booties. <laughs> you see, a hermit crab has an exoskeleton, which means its bone and its hard parts are on its outside. And the inside is squishy with no bones at all, which is exactly the opposite of us, right? We are squishy on the outside and hard on the inside. But the front part of, the, of our friend here, little hermit crab, is the only part that has the exoskeleton. The back part that's hiding inside the shell is soft. And as he grows, he has to keep changing shells. When he changes his shell, by the way, he doesn't grow his own shell. He borrows them from, from mollusks that have died. So he has to run around the ocean floor looking for a larger shell when he's gotten too big. When he does, that's dangerous because fish will try to eat him, that little squishy part. This book helps us to learn more about that. It's called A House for Hermit Crab. And this specifically is a type of hermit crab called a decorator crab because they like to hide, camouflage themselves by placing things from the ocean floor on top of their shell. A House for Hermit Crab. Oh, here's a great illustration. Notice here, there's the squishy booty. That's the part the fish want to eat. And here he's gotten out of his shell looking for a new one. Time to move, said Hermit Crab one day in January. I've grown too big for this little shell. He had felt safe and snug in his shell, but now it was too snug. Hermit Crab stepped out of the shell and onto the floor of the ocean but it was frightening out in the open sea without a shell to hide in. What if a big fish comes along and attacks me, he thought. I must find a new house soon. Early in February, Hermit Crab found just the house he was looking for. It was a big shell, strong. He moved right in and wiggled and waggled with the inside to see how it would feel, and it felt just right. But it looked so plain. Simple, thought Hermit Crab. In March, Hermit Crab met some sea anemones. They swayed gently back and forth in the water. How beautiful you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and live on my shell? It's so plain. It needs you. I'll come, whispered a small sea anemone. So gently, Hermit Crab picked it up with its claw and put it on his back. In April, Hermit Crab passed a flock of sea stars slowly swaying along the sea floor. How handsome you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to decorate my house? I would, signaled the little sea star. Carefully, Hermit Crab picked up with his claw, picked it up with his claw, and put it on his house. In May, Hermit Crab discovered some coral. They were hard and didn't move. How pretty you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to help make my house more beautiful? I would, creaked Krusty Coral. So gingerly, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. In June, Hermit Crab came to a group of snails crawling under a rock on the ocean floor. They grazed on as they went along, picking up the algae and bits of debris and leaving a neat path behind them. How tidy and hardworking you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and help clean my house? I would, offered one of the snails. Happily, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. Can you see those guys? In July, Hermit Crab came upon several sea urchins. They have sharp, prickly needles. How fierce you look, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to protect my house? I would, 
answered a spiky sea urchin. Gratefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it near his shell. Did you catch that? Near his shell, not on it. In August, Hermit Crab and his friends wandered into a forest of seaweed. It's so dark in here, thought Hermit Crab. How dim it is, how gloomy, how murky, I can't see. It's like nighttime. In September, Hermit Crab spotted a school of lanternfish darting through the dark water. How bright you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to light up our house? Our house, he said. I would, replied Lanternfish, and he swam over near the shell. In October, Hermit Crab approached a pile of smooth pebbles. How sturdy you are, said Hermit Crab. Would you mind if I rearranged you? Not at all, answered the pebbles. Hermit Crab picked them up one by one with his claw and built a wall around himself. Now my house is perfect, cheered Hermit Crab. Check it out. But in November, Hermit Crab felt that his shell seemed a bit too small. Little by little over the year, Hermit Crab had grown. Soon he would have to find another bigger home. But he had come to love his friends, the sea anemone, the sea star, the coral, the sea urchin, the snail, the lantern fish, and even the smooth pebbles. They had been so good to me, thought Hermit Crab. They're like family. How can I leave them? In December, a smaller hermit crab was passing by. I've outgrown my shell, she said. Would you know of a place for me? I've outgrown my house too, answered Hermit Crab. I must move on, and you're welcome to live here. But you must promise to be good to my friends. I promise, said Little Crab. The following January, Hermit Crab stepped out, and the Little Crab moved in. Couldn't stay in that little shell forever, said Hermit Crab as he waved goodbye. Oh, there's a squishy part. The ocean floor looked wider than he had remembered. But Hermit Crab wasn't afraid. He soon spied the perfect house, a big empty shell. It looked, well, a little plain. But sponges, he thought. Barnacles, clownfish, sand dollars, electric eels. Oh, there are so many possibilities. I can't wait to get started. The end. I love this book! I hope you love House for Hermit Crab, too. Come back for more. Bye, you guys.